Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. So in this video, I'm going to show you a technique for painting water. I've gotten so many requests to do a tutorial on painting water. And honestly, the reason why I haven't done one yet is because I wasn't very good at it. I wanted to make sure that I practiced and I learned all that I could before I put a tutorial together. So hopefully this video can do this water a little justice. Um, let's get right into it. I've just wet the entire paper so it's nice and damp to start. For the majority of this painting, I'm going to be using indigo and a little bit of a turquoise shade. All of the supplies, as always, are listed below. With the number 14 brush and a mix of indigo blue and turquoise, I'm creating a really, really light wash and I'm just brushing that directly onto the wet paper. I'm making sure to create horizontal straight strokes and I'm making sure as well to leave white space in between them. So kind of think of this as creating ripples in the water and I'm going to be concentrating the color on both of the edges of the paper because I want that center area to be lighter in contrast to create sort of a sunlight effect on the water. I'm just going back in now with a darker mix of that indigo color. The paper is still wet, but it's drying slightly, so it's slightly less damp than when we started. So that's gonna allow the paint to grab onto the paper a little bit better and not bleed out as much as the first layer. Now that that layer is totally dry, you can see that it is very much lighter than it was when we applied the paint. That's just how watercolor works. But I'm gonna go back over that again with a light wash of water and my number one, or sorry, my one inch flat brush just to dampen that paper once again. And now I'm going to work on another layer of just darkening some of the ripples that I've created previously. I'm using indigo again and I mixed in a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. I slowed this down a little bit so you can see the pace that I was actually working at. I was really taking my time and concentrating the strokes where I wanted to place them and making sure to leave white space as I went. Basically this entire painting is just building up layers and darkening those areas that we want to appear in shadow. All while leaving some of that white paper exposed because that's going to really help act as the highlights on the water. So here I'm just making that top area a little bit more blue and I'm continuing adding those strokes coming in from the right hand side and the left hand side of the paper because again I want that middle area to be nice and light. Just use darker mixes of your paint so that means adding less water to your paint and continue darkening areas especially in the front area because this is the area that's going to be closest to us. It's also the area that the ripples in the water are going to appear larger in size and as you get further away the ripples are going to appear smaller and closer together and a little bit lighter. So I'm just continually working on those strokes. I'm using the very tip of my brush for those smaller thinner strokes near the top. So as the paper starts to dry, you're going to notice some of the edges of your strokes might start to become a little more crisp. If that does happen, you can just grab a wet brush and blend out the edges as I've done a couple of times here. Now I'll just dry that and get started on the next layer. For this layer, I've switched my brush size. So I'm using a size 8 brush now, but I'm still using that same indigo color and I'm just going to start defining these waves a little bit more. So I'm just going to start creating different strokes of different sizes and widths. There really is no right or wrong way to do this. Basically what I found easiest was to use the tip of the brush and then push down on the belly of the brush every so often to kind of create um, different sized strokes as you paint. So with the tip of the brush, the strokes are gonna be thinner and then as you push down, they're gonna get thicker and it just kind of adds a more natural, organic look to the ripples. So I'm just trying to focus on darkening some of the bottom areas of the darker strokes that I created in the previous layers. Hopefully that made sense. I want to keep the tops of these ripples white. So I'm trying my best not to go into those white areas of the paper. 
And again, to soften some of those strokes, you can always take a wet brush, dry it off just a little bit, and then blend out the bottom edge of some of these strokes that you're creating now. That will just sort of help it blend into the ripple of water below it. And I do want some of these strokes to be more defined than others. So that means that I'm not gonna be blending out every single one of them. I do wanna keep some of those more defined brush strokes in there. And at this point, you should be able to start seeing the painting come together. We are still gonna go over it with a few more layers to define everything again and just darken some of those shadows and add more highlights. I honestly found water to be a little intimidating all the time because it does take a lot of patience, I find. And when you're starting out with those first couple of layers, it can sort of start to look a little messy and look nothing like you want it to. So it can get a little frustrating. But if you have a plan in mind and you just keep going and you keep building those layers lightly, one on top of the other, it will turn out. You just need patience and this is something I think you definitely have to practice. You can always look at reference photos of oceans and just beds of water to get a feel for where the shadows and the highlights are supposed to go. But have fun with it and try not to copy it exactly because that's where your eyes and your brain can kind of get a little bit mixed up and you might start to feel a little bit more frustrated that it's not turning out exactly how the photo looks. So yeah, use your imagination a little bit and do what feels right. Okay, so I'm painting now wet on dry. So the paper is not wet anymore and I'm going in with that indigo color again, a more concentrated shade and I'm just adding in those darker details. I've already kind of established where the darks go based on all of the previous layers that I've done. So with my brush now, I'm just making those even darker and really, again, I keep saying it, defining the areas that I need to. I was trying to keep this process a little bit more loose. So I was creating some thinner strokes, making some of them go a little bit curvy, um, changing the pressure of my brush tip as I went and also with that smaller brush filling in some of the lighter areas with a lighter wash or mix of the indigo color because I still want you to know that there is water in these white areas. I just still want it to be light but I do want to define some of those ripples a little bit better in this center and top area. I'm just going to continue filling out this white space here with lighter strokes and smaller strokes and then i'm going to take the turquoise shade from my palette and i just wanted some of these areas to look a little bit more turquoise than blue so i'm just lightly washing some of the turquoise over some of these ripply areas you definitely don't have to do this i just wanted a little bit more of that greenish turquoise tone okay so now we're nearing the finish line and I'm using a little bit of lamp black with indigo on dry paper. And once again, I'm just adding that to some of the darker shadow areas of the water. This is really gonna help you start to see some of these ripples really stand out. It's really gonna give it more dimension just because the contrast with the dark and the light, it just makes it look so much more realistic. I'm just choosing some of the areas that I want to place shadows and where I think there would be a little bit of a fold in the water. And a lot of the time, the darker areas will appear directly below a lighter area. So you sort of have this line of white or a lighter color, and then you're going to, bleh, you're going to define that using the darker shade directly below it. As I went more towards the top of the painting, I started using the indigo shade instead of the lamp black, just because once again, I want those areas closest to us to be the darkest. And with the indigo and the very tip of my brush, I'm just creating really fine um, and closer together lines near the top. 
Once again, I'm just brushing on a little bit more of that turquoise color just to fill in some of the white areas because I did find it was a little bit too white. I wanted more of a blue, really, really light blue shade. So now we can start creating some of the highlights. So what I'm doing is taking a white gouache and a little bit of water mixed in with it and I'm just going to start defining some of those highlights. The highlights being the areas directly above the darker areas and some of those white areas that we left. And I'm also adding in just a couple random little curvy and squiggly lines throughout it. If you don't have gouache, you can try using an acrylic paint or a paint pen or a gel white pen, anything that is more of an opaque white color. I could really do this all day, but I think there's a point when it starts to become a little too much. So I think in a minute, I'm just going to stop with the highlights and call this finished because I know the more that I keep messing with it, I'm just gonna ruin it. So I think this is good for now. So here is the final painting. I'm just gonna peel my tape off. Um, I'm happy with how this turned out. I think this is, this is the first water painting that I've actually enjoyed. And I hope that you guys like it too. Please give the video a thumbs up if it helped you out or just if you liked it in general. And subscribe to my channel if you wanna keep seeing more videos like this. I almost forgot my brand new book, Watercolor With Me in the Ocean is now available for pre-sale. I'll put all the links below and I really hope to see you in the next one.